the collapse of physics. Since Newton and Maxwell, physics has been over-mathematized. Louis de Broglie called this mathematical physics pure science, as opposed to bad sciences, such as fluid mechanics and the resistance of materials. Pure science does not need any physical explanation. Pure science must use only universal constants and mathematical equations. They should allow experimental results to be retrieved. The scientific approach is essentially rational. Scientists therefore believe that they can know reality by sticking to the logic. Logic is a sequence of statements. These statements are linked to each other. It's perfect. Yes, but, but, there's a beginning for everything. The most logical reasoning cannot be traced back to infinity. There are necessarily starting points such as principles, postulates or hypotheses. However, scientists believe that no hypothesis were necessary for the basis of physics. They are convinced that since Ersted everything follows a perfect logic, without the slightest hiatus. Nothing can shake the pathetic faith of scientists. They ban relativistic and quantum dogmas as irrefutable truths. They have reached the summit of pure science. The magnificent pure science unfortunately has some troubles, basically experimental. Paradoxes have been multiplying for more than a century. Mitchelson's experiment did not yield an entirely negative result. The measurements can reach 9 kilometers per second. Miller carried out tens of thousands of measurements over months and in places far apart. Professor Lay analyzed Miller's results. He found correlations with the relative positions of the Sun, the Earth and the Moon. It is therefore possible to determine the motion of the Earth around the Sun by optical experiments, which is entirely contrary to the special relativity theory. It is also necessary to mention the deviations of the optical sightings observed by us Langon and confirmed by Furixer and Maureen. They give similar correlations. The most surprising is that mechanical experiments show the same correlations as interferometric measurements. This same professor Alain noticed deviations of his paraconic pendulum as a function of the hour of the day. Sagnac highlighted a phase shift between two light rays, traveling in opposite direction around the periphery of a rotating disk. The Sagnac experiment is the principle of laser gyros which equip satellites, planes and ships. Special relativity should be able to explain Sagnac's experiment for very low rotational speeds. Laser gyros can detect speeds as weak as one hundredth of a degree per hour. But Professor Celery has shown that it is impossible to explain Sagnac's experiment by the theory of special relativity. No other explanation has been proposed by relativists. A photon can only pass through one of the two slits of the famous interferometer. However, there are interference fringes on the screen. The principle of uncertainty shall be applied. The photon has the same probability of wave presence in the two slits. It is thus explained that the photons scatter on the light fringes where their wave probability of presence is the highest. These groupings are therefore deterministic. The photon belongs to the microscopic world, its presence is therefore probabilistic. But the fringes belong to the macroscopic world. So there would be no paradox. Unfortunately, big molecules called carbon-60 and, much worse, even larger organic macromolecules also interfere. Where does the microscopic world end? Where does the macroscopic world begin? Do we also have an associated wave? The photon, as everybody knows, has two natures, wave and corpuscle. Its speed is its main property. This speed is perfectly determined from the exact moment it is emitted. The photon therefore also has two states, deterministic and indeterministic. 
several optics experiments, including those of Professor Aspect, should require information transfers faster than light. Scientists invented quantum entanglement to address this paradox. Particles and photons would carry linked information. What does that mean? The meaning doesn't matter. Scientists have long known that the beams of ions or electrons at the exit of cyclotrons have no magnetic field, although they travel at speeds of tens of thousands of kilometers per second. Scientists claim that the ion or electron beams induce currents in the metal plates of the cyclotron. These currents would generate magnetic fields which would cancel out the beam field. The steering hypothesis has never been verified experimentally or even theoretically. The magnetic fields of electric currents are attributed to the motion of electrons. This is the very foundation of Maxwell's electromagnetic theory. Scientists calculated that the speed of electrons in conductors would not exceed a few millimeters per second. But the speed has never been measured. The Maxwell Ampere equation, the very basis of physics, is based on a quantity that has never been measured. The speeds of stars in galaxies do not conform to Kepler's laws. The gases and stars of galaxies rotate at a constant speed. Relativists invented dark matter, also called missing mass or black mass. This black mass represents 80% of the mass of galaxies. This invisible matter must be distributed homogeneously in the galaxies. Unfortunately, astronomers have discovered that the visible mass of galaxies varies with the fourth power of the rotation speed of the stars. Stacy McGoslar imposes a correlation between black mass and visible mass. The tragedy is that the multiple experiments attempted to detect this famous black mass since the middle of the last century have all completely failed. On the other hand, there are dozens of proposals every year to populate galactic space and represent the dark mass. The most recent candidate is the chameleon particle. A similar problem arises for the expansion of the universe since the Big Bang. Distant supernovae have a lower brightness than expected in an expanding universe. The universe is therefore expanding faster than expected. A mysterious dark energy is needed to explain this acceleration. The origin of this huge energy is absolutely unknown. The famous and costly LIGOs have detected so-called gravitational waves. They seem to be linked to the coalescence of two black holes. This success has given some hope to the relativists, plunged for decades into the throes of the prospect of a collapse. Paradoxes are troublesome. Inconsistencies are lethal. The most famous inconsistency of pure science is the incompatibility between the mathematical view and therefore continuous of relativity and the corpuscular and therefore discontinuous view of quantum mechanics. Great hopes had been placed in the strings theory associated with particles which would exchange the forces of pure science in the same way that rugby players exchange the oval ball while remaining grouped on the field. The collapse is total. Nobody talks about it anymore. As concentrated as matter was originally, during the so-called Big Bang, it has a gravitational field. The gravitational field, the curvature of space, spread out into space from the origin. These fields are undoubtedly part of the universe and can only extend as the speed of light. The universe therefore expands at the speed of light. Contrary to all the theories put forward by relativists, if this curvature is carried by particles, then the universe has not stopped filling up with particles at the speed of light until infinity. The speed of rotation of the Earth on itself varies, as does that of the planets. However, the angular momentum must be preserved. There is necessarily compensation for angular moments at the level of the universe. 
but pure science does not explain how the necessary compensation occurs. This would require another form of remote action fully contrary to the relativity theory. The curvature of space, the cause of gravity, has a central symmetry. However, all systems in the universe have an axial symmetry. The rings of the planets, the solar system and the billions of galaxies exhibit an axial symmetry. Axial symmetry is characterized by zonal properties. Gaseous planets have a zonal aspect. The equatorial and tropical currents of the oceans have a very pronounced zonal character. Moreover, the statistical distribution of the inclinations of comets and asteroids with respect to the equatorial plane of the Sun is essentially zonal up to about 20 degrees. The gaps in this distribution are occupied by retrograde comets. However, the axial symmetry cannot resolve from the central symmetry. Relativists seek to describe the evolution of the universe since the Big Bang. Everything changes, everything evolves. However, pure science is based upon an accumulation of invariance, light speed, gravitational constant, cesium frequency, Planck constant, Boltzmann constant, Coulomb constant, Avogadro number, Stefan Boltzmann constant, Wien constant, Lossmann constant and so on. How to reconcile the evolution of the universe with all these innumerable invariants which would be its very foundation? The invariant source of the change? How was it possible? Why, then, such a craze for pure science? Why such obstinacy in concealing paradoxes and inconsistencies? A theory inspired by Hegel still reigns. Scientists believe that the quantitative accumulation of paradoxes will lead them to the qualitative leap of scientific knowledge. The Great Leap Forward